Um, thank you very much. I think we've exhausted the public speakers. Um, Dr. Thurman, sir. Thank, <clears throat> thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, a couple of things, if I might be so bold. Uh, to our attorney, if you would speak to the issue, I've been listening to all of this and taking notes, and I came up with 12 issues. Um, but the one that sticks out that if I was listening to the radio um, would really concern me if, it, if it's true or not true, I don't know. At some point, um, can you share from your opinion as our legal representative, was the contract that we went through, was it legal? Was it within guidelines? Did we do something wrong? Did we cross over the boundary? Did we violate something? Understanding everybody has their own opinion, but from your opinion to us, uh, that, that's one. Go on. Uh, yes, through the chair. With regard to uh, the agreement regarding salary schedules, um, in accordance with Florida law, chapter 447, uh, the salary schedules were negotiated. There is an elaborate process that laid, that's laid out through the collective bargaining agreement itself, as well as through uh, Florida statute, chapter 447. The process was followed um, in accordance with all the documents that I've reviewed. Um, the uh, proposals were forwarded by the various sides. United Teachers of Dade is the authorized bargaining unit on behalf of uh, instructional personnel uh, in that unit. They uh, provided a proposal and, that was negotiated with the district. It was clear in, in accordance with Florida law what was negotiated and, uh, and the, the salaries and the conditions of employment which their UTD is charged to negotiate were presented for ratification vote. The ratification vote was uh, positive and it was approved and uh, in accordance with chapter 447, as well as uh, chapter 1012, uh, the salary schedule is uh, certainly the, the law of the district. Um, and uh, it, it, certainly staff can feel comfortable you know, implementing it based on the approval and ratification vote of uh, the teachers, as well as uh, the process that was followed under chapter 447. So if I might, it, um, discounting whether happy or unhappy, right or wrong, the legality was followed, right? Yes. Just on that uh, one piece. Yes, based on the documents that I've seen and reviewed, it appears that everything was followed, uh, board policy, the collective bargaining agreement, state okay. statute 447 was followed in negotiating. So uh, for me, and I can only speak for me, if you, when, when you use the word appears, just to be on the safe side, sometime between now and the next school board meeting, would you review and change the word if it's applicable from appears to it does meet legal statute? Is, uh, that, is that possible? I, I'll just put it this way. It does meet okay. uh, the requirements. Yes. Then, okay, so let me just... What I'll do is, um, I'm just gonna read this off quickly. I will put it to you in a memo so that we can continue this. Uh, the issues that I keep hearing over and over, where does the money from our taxes and the state funds go? Obviously, people, some people think it's being misused. Can you use money from technology for something else? The, uh, the general obligation bond money, uh, how is that determined? Uh, are we in violation of the Florida statute for a class size reduction? Are we in violation of the Constitution on free, free speech? I don't just bear with me. Um, oh, uh, the health care costs, can we look at that and see what have we been able to do over the last seven years in terms, I, I know, in terms of, of providing for our employees? Um, and I'll send this to you, Walter. If you could describe uh, the salary process in terms of step versus merit pay and how we as a board, uh, if we're within the legal framework of what was told to us. Um, options for employees if they don't feel that their complaints are being heard, where can they go? Can they go to an ethics committee? Can they go to the inspector general uh, without having to spend, uh, I guess, their own money uh, for lawyers from what I heard? Uh, if reviewing the ESE, Student-teacher ratios, are they within the legal guidelines when we talk about our kids of needs? 
Um, there was one big one, the issue of the unvoted contract. I do not know what that meant, but I'm sure you followed that. Selling of our emails, I've never heard that one before, but if in fact we are selling emails, I would like to know. And um, the issue of how do we determine whether paras are in fact um, if students are in fact eligible for para, para professionals. So I'll put that in there. I think it covers at least the 12 that I've heard. Um, and I, I think that in answering them, it, it will certainly, whatever we answer, however you answer them, it will certainly put out there something that people will hear and read one way or the other, maybe good, maybe bad, but at least it's not just, I mean, I feel, you know, sitting up here and just listening is tough, yeah. tough. You know, because people can get up here and say whatever they want. I can't go check. And I'm not saying they said anything wrong. And I'm not saying they said it right. I'm listening. And that validates their humanity of being able to say something to us. But I'm looking to you to be able to somehow put out there, here are the answers to some of these things. And, and if you need to get with other staff, that's, that's fine. But um, at least it gives us an opportunity to share with the community. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Dr. Feldman. I believe uh, Ms. Marte was signaling that she wanted to speak. You want to speak, Ms. Marte? Madam Chair, thank you for recognizing me. Uh, it's not my intent to get into a debate, ma'am, but I think as the Chief